Greetings, Flesh Wound Horror Freaks, and welcome to a brand new episode of Flesh Wound Horror. I am Daniel Shine, joined by producer Todd. What's up? Pugs Dread. Namaste. And Mike Kruger. What's up, you sick motherfuckers? So we hope you guys are having an awesome night. We have a very, very stacked show, so we'll, uh, we're going to get right into it. Uh, we have a shutter special tonight but at the end we also will have a bonus review for suicide squad so got a little bit of something ever for everybody tonight uh so we'll kick it off french horror to kick things off with teddy which is from the director duo of ludovic bokerma and zoran bokerma and in this film 20 something teddy lives in a foster home and works as a temp in a massage parlor Rebecca, his girlfriend, will soon graduate. A scorching hot summer begins, but Teddy is scratched by a beast in the woods. The wolf that local angry farmers have been hunting for months. As weeks go by, animal compulsions soon start to overcome young Teddy. Uh, all right. Um, so, uh, Teddy, uh, what what did you uh, think about uh, Teddy, Kruger? Um, so, the first thing I'll say is, like, Teddy as a character was uh, pretty likable. Like, you know, he's definitely like a likable, funny jackass type of guy, but you're rooting for him throughout the film. And uh, he also has like this kind of punk rock personality that I just found a little bit charming. Um, and just this whole story starts off with us just seeing his day, his, you know, day to day life. And whether it was us watching him hang out with his girlfriend or, deal with it you know his pervy boss at the massage parlor uh i i found everything like bizarrely funny and really entertaining uh the thing that this movie kind of lacks though is like the actual horror elements like they don't come into play until like way later on in the film and what we did get kind of disappointed me because like it could have really like brought it home with a really strong uh, scene of horror towards the end and they kind of bitch out on it uh so i that left me a little bit disappointed but up until then like i was just having a really good time and surprisingly with it not having the horror elements i did like quite a bit of it uh i just i wish they you know would have ended stronger in the final act when the horror was supposed to actually come into play and uh overall though i say check it out it's definitely not your typical French horror. You know, it's not balls to the wall gore or anything like that. Um, it's more just more of like a dark comedy rather than a horror movie. Uh, that's kind of how I saw it. What about you, Dan? Uh, so first up, I want to say I, I think it's ironic that our Lady Weinstein character is named Jelaine. I, I got <laughs> really? to think that had to be on purpose. Uh, but uh yeah i mean as far as the movie goes this is a very familiar story uh but it is t kind of a eh, different execution i guess uh i didn't i didn't have any issues with the actor i thought he was good i was i didn't find the character of teddy as endearing as you did kruger i don't know i i, I should be rooting for him i mean he's kind of a sad lonely ostracized kind of character that you, you would think you'd have a little more sympathy for uh, the tone. It may or may not work for you guys. It just depends. It's a, it's a kind of quirky. It reminded me kind of like a Napoleon dynamite type. Yeah. Of deal. You know what yeah. I mean? Except, you know, obviously not, you know, as goofy, but it, it had like a similar tone. Yeah. And, and it's, I mean, it's not quite that we, I mean, it doesn't get completely away from being a horror film, um just that the, the quirky eccentric characters just may or may not work for you it just just depends it's definitely not a scary film uh i mean it's as far as the story goes been there done that as far as you know uh werewolf transformation type films um it i don't know i i feel like i could have liked this it's it's a lot more if i had a little more of a connection to that character and I didn't. He kind of comes off as, as a little bit of a a, <laughs> a cuck at times. I, I don't know. There, there were a few times where I'm like, I get they're kind of going for comedy here, but too more often than not, it just didn't connect for me. 
uh, which is it's sad because I do love French horror films, and when when they knock it out of the park, they tend to really knock it out of the park. Um, I, I got a few laughs from it. Some of the massage parlor stuff was was yeah, pretty that shit funny. Was funny. Uh, the the knife wound and blaming it on shitting his pants. Like, <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was funny. I mean, I, I I didn't hate this film by any means. I just it's no American Werewolf in London. Oh hell no! Um, you know it. And towards it's, the yeah. What what, what I was going to say is it's just it's way more of a like dark comedy like don't expect an amazing werewolf trans transformation or you know to see get people get too torn in half and shit like that it, you know that that's not what this movie's here for it's here to more just show you kind of the the ironic side of maybe turning into a werewolf and plays it straight dark comedy uh, i mean i think that's that's the best way to put it yeah you never really get a clear look at any kind of a werewolf so um and i thought this one might like towards the end with the the bingo portion i was like oh okay now it's gonna kick into high gear and it never really does it's not that kind of movie they didn't have a budget maybe yeah that's exactly what i was saying like that's the area where it could have really like actually it became something really good because i don't think you need Mm -hmm. much uh, you just needed that one scene that was balls to the wall crazy as hell, and it just never got there. So it left a little bit to be desired. I mean, you do see the werewolf a little bit, but you know, yeah. it's not a, it's not a very large portion of the film, needless to say. And uh, no, no. yeah, but it, it it won't be for everybody. But I think there will be some people that like it, uh, especially you know if you're in the kind of punk rock type stories. Like I mean, it just the, the kids are a goofy punk rock kid that is kind of a jackass so i found that endearing but it's not going to be for everybody i i felt like it should have pulled at the heartstrings a little more when it got a little more serious and it didn't quite get there for me but uh but it it didn't waste my time it was still an well shot well acted uh so we'll go ahead and rate it uh what say you kruger I am a three out of five. Um, I wish I could give it more, but I really can't. And I think a three is generous. I do. I I can see myself actually rewatching this, and that's why you know it has such a high rating. And you know maybe I'll grow to love it. And I I just I, I do wish the horror element would have kicked in and had one really good scene of horror because that would have you know made this actually way better. But uh, what about you, Dan? Uh, I'm a two and a half. Uh, I. This one, unfortunately, it's not. It, it, it's it's a solid film at times, but I really wanted more from it. But uh, mm-hmm. this is one I think you guys will want to see for yourselves. I, I see this being mixed reviews both ways. So yeah. check it out. Uh, all, right. all right. Moving on to our next Shutter film for the evening. The Boy Behind the Door from... The, another directing duo of David Charbonnet and Justin Powell. And in this film, a night of unimaginable terror awaits 12-year-old Bobby and his best friend Kevin when they are abducted on their way home from school. Managing to escape his confines, Bobby navigates the dark halls, praying his presence goes unnoticed as he avoids his captor at every turn. Even worse is the arrival of another stranger whose mysterious arrangement with the kidnapper may spell certain doom for Kevin. With no means of calling for help and miles of dark country in every direction, Bobby embarks on a rescue mission determined to get himself and Kevin out alive or die trying. Um, All right. Um, So didn't know a whole lot about this one uh, going in. And... uh, it's pretty intense. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, very intense. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised. A, a lot of uh, elements of People Under the Stairs, which is a film that I personally love quite a bit. And um, uh, I, 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 <clears throat> I was glued... I was glued to my... To, glued to the screen. Uh, this has one particular... It's been done before, but I'll tell you, it has one of the more uncomfortable gore moments, and it's so simple, but it gets me mm. every time. Uh, I'm sure you know what it is. Yeah, um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, 
this film has like a, a few moments where you're at times you're kind of yelling at the screen, uh, <laughs> but they are kids. There is a moment with the phone that I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, it really got me. I was like, come on logic guys, come on. Uh, but in spite of that, this entertained the hell out of me. Uh, you root for, uh, you root for these characters. I mean, it, it's not overly graphic, um, in terms of, you know, any like, uh, trauma goes but they don't like shy away from yeah, the danger they, that's going to happen at the same time so your heart's racing in this one you know yeah, they, it, it, it's not extreme horror is what i'm trying to say but you know no they they could have they could have went there but it also mm -hmm. didn't stray stray away from that stuff and you know it, it they didn't just make it implied it's pretty obvious what the fucked up yeah. shit that's going on is going on yeah and um uh Particularly the the second abductor, it, what a great villain uh, and a familiar somebody familiar from other horror projects. I don't think it would qualify as a spoiler, but I won't say. But uh, let's just say you will love this performance. I thought, what <laughs> what a great heel! God damn, some of the the lines. I mean, she is fucking mean to these kids. Um, what did uh, what did you uh, think about uh, this one, Bugs? Um, I don't think I liked it as much as you, and I'm assuming Kruger, because I was just fine. I I wasn't invested as, as like at all. I thought it was good. Uh, I the second person was, killed it. I think awesome, but um, yeah, it was just fine. I I was kind of clock watching. I'm like, I just just do it already. Like it it didn't have me invested like you. Yeah. I thought you were gonna love this, Pugs. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I I could have, because they were teasing me with stuff that I really wanted to happen, and it doesn't really happen the way I would have. There's a story there that could be told. It was you did it in pop for you're not really my what my friends look for. I can't remember her exact wording. But I'm I yeah. Like, oh, I I don't want to make it seem like I was shitting on it, but I just don't think yeah. it was as, as as it didn't hit me as hard as it did you. Uh, I okay. think it's definitely worth watching at least one time. So um, yeah. Okay. Not much, but you not a waste of time. Yeah. What What did mm -hmm. you think, Kruger? Um, first, I gotta say I thought the acting was really good, especially the two um, child actors that we got as our leads. Um, I thought you know they both did good. Uh, Ezra Dewey from the Jin that we just reviewed not that long ago, uh, playing Kevin. I thought it was good to see him again because I thought he did a really nice job in that movie. He did a good job here too. Um. The story, I thought we got put into the shit pretty quickly, and, you know, the kidnapping happens, you know, pretty, uh, you know, quickly, and and it just, it didn't waste any time is what I was trying to say, and, uh, you know, from there, when we find out, you know, why the kidnaps, or why the kids were getting kidnapped, and, uh, you know, all the creepy shit that we find out about what's going on in that house. I thought that was pretty well done. Like I said, it, it it didn't give us super graphic scenes that it could have, but it also didn't shy away from, you know, telling, making that a part of the story. And yeah. it did have a twist to it where I think a lot of films wouldn't go there. And uh, I, I thought that was pretty impressive that they had, you know, a certain character be that, you know, the, the controller of why these kids are getting kidnapped and uh like you said really good villain there um especially in the final act i thought everything was just really strong and uh i appreciated uh i appreciated just you know the the areas this movie went uh that being said last 10 minutes could have been a little bit better and uh less predictable because i thought you had a pretty original uh original story from telling it from the kid's perspective uh so overall it was really good and different i wouldn't say it's like a masterpiece but i could see myself revisiting this uh maybe with a double feature with a uh, hard candy <laughs> <laughs> it it yeah i mean it's not a, like an overly twisty kind of movie um <laughs> uh, but uh yeah. sorry what did you think todd well, i was gonna say sorry not an elliot page fan um, I'm actually with Pugs on this one. I was kind of clock watching. Um, 
I you know, what, real quick, it. I think I just figured out why too, because it, it does kick off so fucking fast. I'm like, we're just in it. And then like, I'm wrong, stuff's happening, but it's like, oh, it kind of peaked my interest up, up top. You you didn't see like find any of like the stuff when Bobby's trying to maneuver around and not get caught though, suspenseful. Yeah, like cause yeah, that, I thought it was super suspenseful. Yeah. Not really. I I probably just didn't care for the kid. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. We know why, Pugs. It's okay. Uh, I'm sure that factors in. Show me the shadows. No one can see them. I, I, uh, I thought these child actors were actually fantastic. Um, it's surprised we didn't. We don't really get any backstory on them, which is interesting because I mean you can tell they want to get really away from. Well, they want to get away running. from something, but they don't really delve into that at all. Which I, I have don't a know. question. Because Dan, you like you like the Stranger Things kids, you like these kids. What age do they you start hating them? Because I know if you they're teenagers. I, What's the uh, ch- child actors? That's one thing. Like if you go back to like an '80s horror movie, I mean, there's exceptions to the. Rule. I'm not talking about child oh, actors. I'm I'm talking about the the kids. It just depends. Like, it's like a good actor. It just it just yeah. depends. An annoying child actor can ruin a movie, and sometimes that's partially direction. Sometimes it's I just still don't think kid. you're comprehending my question, but I'll move. When on. what age I, do they start getting on your nerves? Thank. I you. don't know if that's necessary in, in real life. The case. Oh, real oh, no, life? Are you no, no, Dan. There is there is a movie like at like a certain age, you're like you're like fuck these kids. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I think, I think it's older, a re- more teenage. More yeah, I think it's like around like. Schoolers. Yeah, I think it's yeah. around like freshman to uh, junior okay. age. Yeah, I'll so, say that. Yeah, so like 13. fourteen to seventeen, mm-hmm. they can go fuck themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. pretty much. I'm gonna. Ch- well, I better not. Careful, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> At a certain age, yeah, they they just kind of suck. But uh, yeah, I mean, this movie's straightforward. But I'm actually, I kind of thought this would be the one we'd all it and. Hey, yeah, Kruger and I agree. So you can suplex the shit out of both of them, Kruger. Um, but he likes us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's very just straightforward. The suspense, I thought, never let up from beginning to end. Yeah. But I, I, one thing, and it's not a spoiler, but all right, you're calling the cops, all right? Why would you hang up? I understand you got to leave because somebody's coming. Why Do you know how old these kids the are, man? They don't fucking oh, no, know. I'm sorry. He was at least 12. Come on. 12, 13, whatever he was. You leave the phone. They can. <laughs> they said we, we need to trace you're, it. You're leave applying logic to a 12-year-old boy who is yeah, fucking that... terrified in a strange place he doesn't know. I don't think you hang the phone up, though. He wasn't like yeah. 8. He was 12 or well, 13. Dan's obviously, obviously never been terrified. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, young, like, young Dan would have just like set the phone down and ran. I'm not saying he can stay on the phone, but it, it, when seconds count, it might not cross your mind while you're fucking panicking. Yeah, there's. I, I don't find that unrealistic, like at all. Because yeah. look, if, even even like abused wives, people in abused relationships, yeah. they they hang up the phone not knowing any better. Hopefully, they get in, in touch in time. Like they're scared and terrified. They're not thinking straight, man. You but have to also, also know the person. Yeah, but you have to also think what he just saw his buddy go through. I mean, I I, I wouldn't be thinking clearly either. I'd be pissing my fucking pants. True, but he was also it's he had pants. the wherewithal to do <laughs> other things, not to give away plot stuff that happens. But he was obviously a very intelligent mm. kid as far as what he was able to do. Again, but it's also in back. a terrifying situation. Yeah. You're coming right. from a calm perspective yeah. of a 38 year old. But you man. can still run away and leave the phone. I don't know. I'm. I, it's not a big thing. But then like the he's gonna movie. notice that shit's not in the place where it should be. So that could be a problem too. He might think of that. I don't know. How yeah, am I a fan of this movie? I like it way less than you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why, why, why don't we rate this bitch then? Um, yeah. Let's let's go ahead and rate. Uh, well, uh, Kruger, what say you? I'm gonna, and this may be a little bit high, but uh, I'll, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I thought it was really, really good, and I can, like I said, definitely see myself watching it again. Uh, if it gets a physical release, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, you know, add it on t- to the shelf. So, uh, what about you, Dan? Uh, I'm a four out of five. Also, I, I think it's, it's not the most original thing you've ever seen, but man, one of the more suspenseful movies I've yeah. seen in a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pugs, how about you? Well, 
I'll do my favorite scene was the black kid trapped in uh, black kid, well, one of the kids trapped in the back seat of yep. the of the car. I I thought that was cool. Uh, overall, the movie's a three. I definitely think you should watch it, especially it's on Shutter. Fucking enjoy yourself, and then maybe you'll like it like these gentlemen, or maybe you'll find it like me, where it's like, oh, that was cool. Move yeah. on with my life. What about or you? Or like God? me, I'm a three. I'm a three also. Okay. Um, for me, it's a, just a one time watch, but I get why other people will like it. Sweet, sweet. All Man, right. I like seeing those little boys terrified. I get it. Uh, that's fucked up. Um, I, 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 it's funny. I <laughs> thought it, yeah, I, I, you know, and it is the same filmmaking team that, that did Jin uh, as well. Oh, is kid, it real? Dude, yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's they carried him over. I did not. Can I go I two? Think any of us love Jin. <laughs> no, this is miles uh, better. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you can see the progression, but I I thought the kid was very good in Jin too. I had a lot more problems. I think he was, my, Jin, I think but... he was my favorite in the in that movie. I know I didn't like it. Yeah, I, blocked I, it I, out. yeah, but I it, think he did a good job. He did a good job in this one. It was just I I, I don't know. Hit uh, take it or leave it for me. Okay. Well, uh, as always, guys, weigh in in the comments uh, or any of our social media if you saw any of these. We're always curious to get your opinions. Nah, go fuck yourself. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, so our next film, another French horror film. Uh, well, the last one was American, but uh, our second French horror film for the evening uh, from uh, director duo Julian Mari and Alexander Bustillo. Uh, if you may recognize those names they directed the original 2007 inside uh which i consider a modern classic i think uh, most of us here would uh absolutely and, yeah, yeah i don't even see, yeah that's one of my prob uh my favorite i love it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's a that's yeah, an excellent film if you haven't seen the 2007 inside Please get on that immediately. Uh, I'm sure that'll come up again. But uh, their new film is Candisha, and in this uh, in this movie, it is summer break and best friends Amelie, Binto, and Mor Morjana hang together with the neighborhood team. Tonight they have fun sharing goosebump stories and urban legends. But when Amelie is assaulted by her ex, she remembers the story of Candisha, a powerful and vengeful demon. Afraid and upset, she summons her. The next day, her ex is found dead. The legend is true, and now Candisha is on a killing spree. The three girls will do anything to break the curse. Uh, all right. Um, so, uh, Candisha, uh, what did you uh, what did you think, Kruger? Um, so, the characters in this movie are very much punk ass teenagers. So, like, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> so, like, honestly, nobody was really likable, but I did find some of their, like, witty banter with the dialogue kind of, you know, funny. There were some moments that made me laugh. Um, so, the story, like, br brought the paranormal entity into play pretty quick, which I liked. And when we dived into some of the lore of Candisha, uh, it wasn't anything in particularly, like, new, but what we got, I thought, was actually decently well done. Um and the final act, I thought, like, really ended strong for me, especially when we saw that monstrous Candisha walking around in all its, you know, practical, grotesque glory. And the imagery with her was just, you know, really creepy as shit at times. And uh, what this movie brought to the table uh, that most paranormal flicks don't was there was a few really fucking gory and brutally awesome kills in this that I didn't see coming at all. And to be honest with you, like everything was a little run of the mill until we got to those kills. So I was, I was get, getting a little checked out, but then a couple of the things I saw, I was like, Holy shit, that was really badass, And uh, this is kind of bringing me around on it uh, because uh, a couple of really impressive practical effects, helped balance stuff out because i mean there was some shitty cgi in it too uh, i'm not gonna you know go without saying that there was a sequence where somebody jumped from a building that looked fucking terrible uh but it balanced itself out with some solid practical effects so uh overall i liked it definitely could have been more original and it definitely had a lot of room for improvement but the kills and candisha as an entity uh brought it above average for me and i can't see myself watching it again down the line 
Okay. And uh, Pugs, what did you think of Candisha? Well, first off, let me open with Inside is the Shit. And Leatherface is kind of shitty, and they also did made that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a somewhere in the middle because I did not love this, but I did also also didn't waste my time. Uh, the ending, like, well, when Candisha actually shows up, it also reminded me of that one Masters of Horror episode with the the Moose Lady, whoever the fuck it was. So that oh, was kind of uh, cool. Beer, beer oh, Woman, yeah, Beer Woman, yeah. 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 They reminded me of that thing. So that part was cool. Yeah, I really didn't like any of these teens. I didn't want to spend any time with them at all. I'm like, you know what? If you get hurt, I'm kind of glad. I'm okay with it. <laughs> there was one character, though, the dad of the black girl. Oh, Loved yeah. Him. He was cool. He was cool I, as hell. I really wanted him to be okay. Yeah, I'll that homie got done watch. dirty. <laughs> I'll let you guys watch him find out. But, yeah, he, he did. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, but, yeah, we've we've seen it before. Done. Uh, yeah, it's good. But, um. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of start. I don't want to lose faith in my inside people, but this is kind of technically strike two, but or ball one. We'll go that way. This way, I'm not a complete asshole. Uh, not a waste of my time. I liked. I liked enough of it to uh, recommend. Definitely at least watching it one time. Yeah. Uh, so I remember after Inside, just absolutely falling in love with that movie. I, I, I was ready to swallow dick after that movie. I'm not that- even into that shit. <laughs> masterpiece um Mm -hmm. and i really thought i was like all right we have these two guys were going to be on par with with the greats they're the new masters of horror they were attached Uh, to hellraiser for a long time too oh they were and i'll be honest when i heard they were doing uh leatherface i was like all right they're gonna do something (laughs) interesting with it and look at the end of the day, there were a lot of problems with that movie. It's not just like them screwing it up. I think shooting it, you know, it looks like Bulgaria for one don't, thing. It's don't not, remind me, man. Don't uh, fucking remind me. I think there, there was, was a lot of uh, uh, hands it, in the kitchen and they can only do so much. Uh, but... Yes, there were a lot of issues on that, unfortunately. And, you know, it is what it is. Um, they did another film called Livid that's pretty good. But to be that's honest, they, they've been chasing the magic ever since inside and they've never quite gotten there um they do have another film out right now called uh deep house which is like an entirely underwater haunted house flick yeah so there's still some hope that's Uh, out oh it's not out yet blumhouse Blumhouse, yeah blumhouse is distributing it in the states okay yeah oh cool so hopefully yeah we can't Um, hear you Todd. what's it called deep house Deep house, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the like front an underwater. Haunted yeah, it's house. yeah. It's yeah, on no, my watch list. I just don't remember when it comes out. I think we watched a teaser trailer for it mm-hmm. on one of our trailer shows uh, yeah. a while back. So uh, we'll, well, I, I can guarantee we'll have a review. Even that. if I never right. liked their another movie that they, those, those guys make, they always made it inside. They're always okay in my book. Yeah, yeah. and they're not they're not bad filmmakers. Uh, it, it's it can be complicated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say, as far as Candisha goes, very predictable story. I mean, this is very much like any other uh, urban legend, teen horror yeah. flick. The the story is not unique. This is a based on a Moroccan legend. So uh, I will say, even though it's predictable, it's scarier than your. It's definitely a notch above the countless Bloody Mary. Flicks, the Lila Llorona urban legend flicks. This is still in a higher weight class than those. Yeah, the characters are cliche. Nobody's particularly likable, um, but it, it does have its moments. It's entertaining. Uh, unfortunately, just that the, the story, man, and it's got the wise old man uh trope in there as well to yeah. you know with all the answers it really just kind of goes through the motions uh there is at least one kill that was like holy shit they really <laughs> yeah, they really go for it it's um, two for me yeah there, there's there's a few there was one in particular though that i was like oh okay kruger's gonna at least like that <laughs> at the very least um and i thought the last half did kind of bring the gore and you know it, it, it has a couple the note it ended on uh mm-hmm. like surprise like the note it ended on surprised me because i was like oh wow they actually went with that you know usually that would be something you would 
you, you you wouldn't go with. So that's the one thing it did to set it apart. That and the gore, I think, set it apart from your typical run of the mill paranormal entity flick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it did, and and it, it was still like I said, it, this didn't feel like. <laughs> I've seen a lot of very similar movies to this recently, and yeah. it is better made than your average. Uh, I wish I, I wish I just liked the characters a little more. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Again, that would have like really I said, dude. Helped. They're punk ass kids. So like they like they're not likable whatsoever. And like yeah, yes, it was for sure. Yeah. Although I did like their town and like the opening scene with them hanging out. I I thought I was gonna like them more because I was like, oh, that's yeah. kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. They, a couple of them seemed like older than they yeah, should have been true. too, which was weird, um, <laughs> but not uncommon in a horror film. Cool uh, artwork. Yeah, yeah the the artistry is still there. Like I said, it, it certainly has its moments. And uh, ugh, man, I wanted to like this more. Every time I see their names, I'm like, come on, You're give right. it to and us again, and they don't. And I pop, I popped for the ex boyfriend scene. I wasn't expecting them to go that hard without spoiling and everything, uh, but yeah. I think I was um, a dick. <laughs> yeah. So um, why don't we rate this one then? Uh, Absolutely. So I'll go first. I'm a three out of five. Uh, I can see myself watching it again. Won't be anytime soon, but the two, like I said, the two kills that I did really like uh, were worth it, a mission for me. So, uh, what about you, Pugs? I am also a three. It's definitely worth checking out at least once. I recommend you check it out. I'm a I'm a two and a half, uh, but I was entertained. It, it's a one time watch. I can't see myself revisiting it anytime soon, so I gotta give it a two and a half. But it has its right. moments. <clears throat> so there you go. Uh, all right, moving on to our next film, which is a Halloween themed film. So. Uh, yeah, very excited to see that. We'll be you'll be seeing uh, quite a bit of that coming up. I know we do have uh, other. Well, we have a new Halloween film, so that of course. And I know I've I've already seen a few other things that are uh, Halloween centered uh, that we'll we'll be having for you on the road to Halloween. Uh, so this film is from director duo. Uh, Ariel Semino and Jeff Ryan. It's a theme of uh, director duos tonight. And uh, in this one, when a tourist dies on Halloween night in Salem, the crowd seeks justice by mounting a modern day witch hunt. Our wrongly accused heroes, a troop of witch trial reenactors, flee as another tourist dies, then another, making it clear that this is much more than just some accident. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, so, real, real quick, say the name of the movie. Mass Hysteria. There we go. Did I did I botch the title? Did I say one of the other movies? Uh, you didn't say it at all, actually. So. <laughs> oh well, there you go. That, that becomes very important to our audio listeners. Mass <laughs> Mass Hysteria, guys. My bad. Uh, all right. So this one's unusual. I mean, first off, I do want to uh, point out that uh, we do get. Uh, Steven Spielberg's biological daughter, i.e. not the one that did porn, uh, Destry <laughs> Alan Spielberg, and this is Triss. Uh, I don't know if I've watched her in anything else actually, but... Um, the porn one? I'm sure you have. Not the porn one. He this subscribed. Was it was, she daughter. made OnlyFans, right? Um, That's what she did. Something like, yeah, it was, I'm sure oh, yeah, he Dan was, doesn't I'm know. sure he would. <laughs> do porn when... But anyways. Uh, so, Fucking rebel. this... I could kind of compare this to the Joe Lynch film Knights of Baddest, though, in, in not in style so much, but in terms of the storyline, you've, you've got the reenactors in the town trying to figure out who's behind these uh, these uh, killings. Um, very weird tone for me in this one. Uh, it It almost felt like if you took out some of the adult content, which there's not a lot, this is kind of light fluffy stuff for the most part uh but you know you take out a little language and and whatnot and this this actually would have flowed better as like a um i don't know like a, a, a up against Goose like pumps. halloween halloween town sort of thing mm -hmm. uh it's not unfortunately because there are some 
you know, adult things here and there. Uh, there's some late in the game gore, but overall, it, it's weird. It's one of those ones where I was like, well, you might as well just make this more of a, you know, teen sort of thing. Uh, it it's not great. I mean, that's the problem. It it. it it's not i never really laughed at this uh and i don't know if it's just me i guess we'll see uh, pick a lane either be really fucking funny or be really fucking scary don't be mediocre and that's where this coming yes. kind of fell yes it, it, it i think it sounds weird but i really think you really didn't have a whole lot of r-rated content so just make this more of a light-hearted comedy like i said it, it it's it's that too adult better. It's a little too adult for kids, but I think it would have appealed to them more. Uh, so, yeah, it's strange. Uh, I, I don't think it was the actors so much, everybody's game, but it's all kind of corny, cheesy kind of humor that I think would have fit a little more if you were a kid. They ended up making a, a, a movie that I don't know has a big audience. Uh, but, I mean, what, I have, what, what did you think? I have zero faith in this fucking movie. So, first off, it's only 66 minutes. So yeah, I'm like, oh, how, how bad can it be? I feel like I wasted my time. I really didn't care about this at all. I should have watched a different movie. But and either way, I'm not a fan of it. I didn't think it was that great. It looked fine. It looks well made. So someone's got some skill there. But this story is whack. No one's that funny. And I don't really get too much gore or anything. I guess the Halloween setting was kind of cool. But either way... I wouldn't bother. I can't recommend anybody watching this watching this damn movie. So, I, I did you? laugh once uh, when a character goes, "We're like Romeo and Juliet, or Oedipus and his mom." That uh, line again, is yeah. the best in the movie because I did I laugh pretty hard but, on that too. Oedipus but it feels it feels more like a kids movie, so it's like you got that line and it's like, "Oh, let's do an incest joke." It just doesn't work. That one really came out of fucking nowhere, too. <laughs> yeah. If the I whole movie was to set up that one joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, this is a comedy. I mean, this is a comedy that's not that funny. But what uh, what did uh, what did you think, Kruger? Um, like Pugs already said, like I kind of like the setting of Salem during Halloween. And like as far as characters go, like I like Paige and you know her kind of bitchy attitude. Um but most of the supporting and side characters were like over the top to the point where it was more obnoxious than funny. And uh, like, there's a few, but there was like one character I actually did find really funny. And that was Paige's agent. Just watching him. Like just, we kept cutting back to him doing various shit during his office hours. And like, he's like taking a shit, eating a sandwich, <laughs> fucking going to sleep at his desk. Like, it, so that was like, probably what i find found funniest but outside of that yeah the comedy didn't really work for me either uh, i thought you know having a witch hunt during or due to a you know a play about witch hunting was you know interesting at first but it never brought it you know brought it home and like it this felt like it wanted to be a splatter comedy but it never really gets there with the gore and um like if it would have had like more over the top blood and gore, I, I would have understood what they were going for, but it really just never got there. I mean, there's some little things here and there, but uh, I don't know. And then like the, the twist just had me rolling my fucking eyes. Uh, it was just so predictable. And I was just like, like, I was just like, man, how fucking, you know, you could have made anything less predictable than what the fuck you went with right there. Uh, and I would have went with something more creative. So overall it has, you know, maybe a couple of things going for it, but it didn't completely work with, uh, work for me. And, uh, I think, you know, barely over an hour though, you can do much worse. Uh, so maybe it's worth checking out, but it doesn't get my full stamp of approval. <laughs> Yeah, it, the setting might put you in the mood for Halloween, and the Oedipus line was fucking hilarious. The, the one thing I'll say is maybe if you, uh, maybe if you're into like the Salem witch trials, just as a subject, check this out. Um, maybe, but, maybe. I mean, just if you, if you ever wanted a a horror comedy about that stuff, I mean, you got it. So, yeah. What and about you, Todd? Test may go over. The kids said so maybe you'll watch that with your kids I don't or know. or it may not depending on your household 
Um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, oh a, big, it's a big switch you on your hub, hard. man. <laughs> you Took a dark. minute. Um, see, now this show was see, now the review was worth it just so I could get that joke in. <laughs> <laughs> Oedipus yeah, review coming soon. It's, I'm it's, with you it's guys. big on Dan's hub, <laughs> right? Dan, I'm not even gonna. Go down that road just, now. Okay. Just step siblings. It doesn't count. <laughs> um, That's a whole rant. I don't get that at all, but go for it, Ty. <laughs> I think we have a Patreon show building now. Um, I totally forgot. Yeah, this movie, I, I'm with you guys. I, I I wanted it to be more funny. Like, I like Paige. I like the setup. Um, I just, uh, the execution wasn't there. And you're right. It was a for long 60, 66 minutes, right? <laughs> For sixty-six, yeah. I you know what? With credits too. That this would have been. Oh, oh, sorry. This would have been, I think, a better short. Like if 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 you tag this on to like a, a anthology film, I think it would have worked way fucking better. Yeah. That that anthology or that that Adam Sandler Halloween movie from last year, which is more on the Oopies? the family. No, I can't. Who who be Halloween? Who be Which Halloween. is more on the the family, like. More family, more like what you're describing. It's you know family yeah. friendly. Yeah. That's I, what this should have been. I mean, that was a much better movie. Mm. That was long as fuck too, though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but respect Buscemi, our time, people. They're not to tell your damn story. The semi made it worth it, so that's all I'll say. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I guess we just want to rate this one and, and get yep. the hell yeah. out of here. <laughs> I don't expect high numbers, Dan. Uh, I give it a one for the sheer fact that, I mean, a couple, fi- the one line in particular that did make me laugh. Uh, other than that, it, it it has its moments where it at least made me excited for Halloween. It should have been just a kid's flick, though. It really should have. And when you watch it, you can see like... Then okay, you would have made this review kind of weird, Dan. <laughs> I don't know if it would have helped. I, I just think it... Actually, I do. I think it would have helped quite a bit. They could have reimagined this because there's just not enough. It doesn't need to be an R-rated movie. You're you're making a teen centric Halloween. Very, play. very, very weird of you to argue away an R rating. I, it sounds yeah, but it's barely R. So they, you could have had but, a teen friendly, but uh, here's spooky the difference, flick on. You're, you're trying to book for Americans. This is a British film. Their classifications are different. This is a, a film for 15-year-olds, basically, there. So in England, they're like, okay, well, we can still have uh, references to uh, incest. Yeah, the, their education system lets them know that that's funny. Yeah, so <laughs> they also say cunt every other word. And here yeah. you, you, you might get stabbed for saying that. Um, so, yeah, there is that to remember. This was aimed at the 15 because there's – I forget. I know it was the British film, actually. It's interesting. 99% sure. If not, my argument's wrong. <laughs> um, but it's this country of origin, the United States. Okay, then no, I, I don't think this is British, Todd. Either right, way, so. it's not going to affect my rating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you rate it, Pugs? One. Okay. And I have um, nothing else to say. <laughs> fair enough. I'm actually yeah. way higher. Um, I'm, I'm a two and a half. Uh, like, right. I thought it was about average. Um, I, I think there's an audience for it, but uh, definitely, you know, don't go. And like I said, I, I think there's worse ways to spend, you know, an hour and 10 minutes, but there's also a lot better, too. So, two and a half for me. Uh, Todd? I, I'm actually with Kruger on this one. I'm a two and a half. It, it, it's it's average. Um, I, I wouldn't even use it as background noise. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm done with it. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't feel the need to ever watch it again or anything like that. But I, I, I didn't. I didn't hate it. And like, usually, I hate horror comedy. So it, it had something going for it. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm into the fucking Salem witch trial bullshit. Could that be. could be it. Yeah. It, yeah. I I love Salem. I've only been there once, and I really want to go back at Halloween. But. uh yeah, I don't. I, 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 those Halloween Town things. I, I watched them ages ago uh, with my uh, oldest niece. Sure. I kind of think those put you more in the oh, mood. Though. No, like, I, I, I watched those. I don't know why. 
but I'm yeah, watching I watched them with Disney Plus, and I still yeah. haven't seen them. Really? Yeah, I'd, ra- I'd rather kill myself than one. You know what? I will say I'm gonna put <laughs> I mean, over they are kid. They are kid. I'm, not I'm gonna put over a Disney movie. The first movie based off an attraction is their best movie based off an attraction, and that is Tower of Terror. Other than that, yeah, it's their first one. It was actually shot at the place too in the Florida mm-hmm. one. Was That's... Gutenberg the dad in that? Yes, he was. It was okay. I remember that. So yeah. Oh, and uh, see, you'd have to be an office person. Did Jan from the Office is also the hot chick in it. Oh, nice. No so, shit. When she was younger. Okay. You know, yeah. you know. Here's a here's a random trivia bit for her, which I can't think of her name right now, but she was originally Jennifer in Back to the Future. Until Eric Stoltz got replaced because she had to get replaced because she was like towering over Michael J. Fox. Uh, so oh, that's that when the, so, so the cast uh, got shook up, shaken up. So yeah. she, she was got to haunt you, though, man. Yeah, and that one's not even her. She's fucking fuck you, Eric Stoltz. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you short motherfucker. <laughs> no, tall motherfucker. Oh, Michael J. Fox. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Well, yeah, it's, I she rooted when he got the no. Never mind. Um, I, I know where you're take. going. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So our next film, uh, kind of a foreign horror theme. Uh, we're heading over to Turkey now uh, with the antenna from director Orkan Bilam. <laughs> And in this one, Mehmet, a superintendent at a crumbling apartment complex, supervises the installation of a new antenna by the government. When the broadcast transmission begins to menace the residents of the complex, Mehmet must seek out the spiteful entity. Uh, All right. Uh, So we are big fans of... Oh, sorry, Kruger, what? Oh, no, I was going to say tag me in first because I have... have I have pretty ha- like I think you were about to already go there. We've seen some we're pretty Turkey great thi- Yeah, we've seen some pretty great things out of Turkey uh with John Evernall, um one of my favorite uh, up and coming directors, uh Baskin's one of my favorite horror films of the last, you know, last two decades. So, I had some high expectations going in cuz you know, I'm always down for Turkish horror and uh really wanted to see what they what they were bringing to the table here. And um, I'll just say this. The acting is solid and the movie shot well. Um, I don't think the characters were really that great. Um, our main character, Mehmet's very melancholy and not the most interesting person to be following around. Um, and I also wasn't too crazy about any of the other characters we got either. Um, like, there wasn't just anybody I could really get behind or actually care for and uh the story is just so slow paced that uh it's just not interesting at all in my opinion uh especially you know in the beginning when we're watching the met go through his day-to-day life and as a hotel attendant we learn about the other residents at the hotel uh it just it was just dragging ass for me a lot and you know eventually you know some mysterious shit starts happening you know with the black goo coming from the walls in the hotel but uh everything we got i just found more more weird and bizarre than entertaining and just with the pace so draining uh, i was checked out by the first hour and then you know we had almost a whole nother hour to go and anything the same fucking thing (laughs) yeah and like anything we got after that just i was like fuck this isn't worth it this isn't worth the journey at all and uh it just never brought brought it back around for me um i thought this movie in general was just a whole lot of style over substance um and i found it just boring and hard to get through i also watched this with a friend of mine and uh, he said the scariest thing about this movie was the runtime, and I have to agree. Uh, it it kind of sucked the life out of me, and I needed something to perk me up after uh, by the end of it. So uh, I didn't think it's worth your time, quite frankly. Uh, maybe if you're into arti- artsy horror uh, or slower paced, you know, slow burn stuff, uh, you may you may want to check it out, but. Uh, I, I can't recommend it because uh, I don't want anybody to be pissed off at me. So, what about what about you, Pugs? Uh, the dude fixing the antenna had the right idea. I didn't like this fucking movie. Uh, 
at all. <laughs> this was pretty, this is a dud. Um, it starts off like I'm going to be interested because something kicks off. So Something happens. I'm like, oh, cool. That's what this movie is going to be. And then it goes off into this weird, like we said, black, black, black goo and ventures off into like, you know, the other tenants in, in the apartment building. But I didn't give a fuck. I did not like it. Wasted my time. And the only reason why I'm not going super low is because it's Turkish. And I do think the movie looks good. It's just yeah. the story is boring. So No, it's well shown. The cinematography is good. But it just, like I said, style over substance. Because, I mean, there's just see everything feels so drawn out. And there's, like, sequences in the movie where I'm like, come on, let's get going. Like, we don't need the slow motion shot or everything to be so slow paced. And that's just it throughout. What I, about I find you, it Dan? funny though. You you mentioned that hour mark because I did the same thing. I, I was like, "How much left do I have?" Oh my yeah. god, it's only been a fucking hour. Yeah, <laughs> Dan. So it, it is. It is long, longer than it probably has to be. Uh, I think there is, with what's going on in the world and and Turkey in particular, which uh, John Evernall actually talks a little bit about in our interview with them. So you should go back and listen to that. I thought that was really really good. I like to have him back one day but uh very timely film as far as you know people taking the state line and and falling in in uh falling you know under what they want uh it's a very dystopian uh it's a 1984 kind of story it could be a little more subtle i mean this one is pretty straightforward uh you know there's no interpretation of what you're seeing necessarily it is a fucking gorgeous movie some of the shots are very eerie the the shot where he's uh staring out and everybody's just looking through the window at the windows in the apartment complex at him there's a lot of moments like that where i'm like man there's a lot of talent behind this movie um I do think it actually manages some pretty solid suspense when he goes in the flooded area. And uh, I liked it. It's not a great film. And and that's disappointing because, again, you can see the talent involved. Um, I appreciated it with, with everything that's going on right now with the government, you know, government more and more control over our lives and, uh, yeah, that was the whole thing uh, with the black ooze that I, I I know maybe some people may or may not get. It's it's they don't see it because they're so. No, I get you know, it, the, but yeah, it, I get it, but it's so in your face. It I, I didn't mm-hmm. find it was like artistically done. There's a way of getting your message across without being that blunt, and just maybe if there was something, maybe if there was something more. I don't know. In those moments where we're seeing stuff like that happen, maybe if there was more, but like it kind of teases some body horror stuff that it never really accentuates. Like I, I wanted more, you know. Let's make it an actual horror film, and uh, like I, I think it just kind of was there more for its message and just to, you know, be artistically done. And I mean, it accomplishes it, it from the cinematography. I mean, it definitely accomplishes something there, but. It, I think there was ways to make the story more interesting and not as drawn out. Did you guys no suspense for you guys at all? Like with the the no. father and daughter at that. By point? the time that shit started taking off, I was already checked out, man. Yeah, it is like long. Yeah. well, uh, with the father and daughter, like I kind of I don't know everything because of everything up until that point. It's so drawn out that I'm just kind of like, all right, can. Can something fucking happen already? Uh, and I, I don't know. I, I think there was there was ways of making it flow better. But uh, I mean, I'm glad you liked it. I, I'm sure people that you know know about the stuff going. I, I didn't really even think about that to be honest with you. Uh, Not just like in Turkey I, here. Too. No, no. I, I yeah. get I get what you mean, yeah. but like I I wasn't thinking like directly from what's going on in Turkey. I was just kind of thinking of more of a you know general stance, but. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just it definitely ain't on ain't on John Evernall's level. That's all I'm fucking saying. No, no, and like I said, it could have been a little more subtle. The our voice is your voice. Yeah, I think I I might have. There were certain things I would have gone a little more subtle, but 
it's still a beautiful film to look at. I like the message of the movie. Uh, I didn't have a big issue. I think all the characters were kind of supposed to be just emotionally detached and just beaten down by their environment. So I, I actually did like the actors. I know there have been other reviews that have commented on that, but I thought the actors were actually good for what they were going for. And I'm no expert on, on Turkey in particular. I just, I think this one has a lot of, um, uh, you know, just, it's timely for probably a lot of different countries in the world in general right now. Uh, not a classic. I don't want to put this over too much because I think honestly, most of you will be more in Kruger and Pug's camp on this. Uh, in fact, I don't think I'm almost a hundred percent positive. I'm going to be in the minority, but what can I say? I, I liked it. It could have been much more than what it was though. So, uh, gentlemen, what do you rate it? Want to go first, Kruger? Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a one out of five. Uh, I like I said by the end of it, I felt very fucking drained. So, uh, but uh, it's not going to be for everybody. But it, yeah, yeah, I think this is a dud. But every the cam camera work, it looks good. So I'm going to give it a one just for the way it looks. But fucking, I don't think Mr. Mass it. Hysteria Pugs. <laughs> you think about that, save it for the end. Damn. This looks better than, uh, Ma than Mass Hysteria, but. Oh, okay. I was, yeah, I was going to say, I think you can give it that much. <laughs> uh, I actually really enjoyed hanging out in this world. I, it could have, there were certain points where I think it could have used a little more pizzazz, but uh, I am a three. But I did actually like the movie, so it is it's it's a it's certainly above average for me, and I appreciated it. More Turkish horror, more Indonesian horror, uh, Malaysian horror. A lot of these regions that are just slaying it right now. Uh, and I don't know, check it out. Let it, this one in particular. If any of you have watched it, I'd be curious for you to weigh to weigh in. And, wow! Uh, right on. I'm yeah, shocked at that. That's I cool. Did, it had moments where it was great. The whole thing. Again, I, I can't go higher than that. I, I almost wanted to, though, because, like I said, it's just like, oh, man, it's just one of those movies. It could have been more. But it, it's a, I mean, it's a lot of Cronenberg vibes to it and Lynch vibes and, you know. Yeah, but, Cron Lynch but Cro Cronenberg. Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> well, it's not Cronenberg say, level, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but it could have been. I mean, if they would have put some work into the body horror aspect, it definitely could have been. Uh, yeah. I just I I saw some wasted opportunity there with that shit, um, but uh, yeah. All right, so there I, I knew this this was uh, like I said it really the films I was like man I have no idea on some yeah. of these so uh, I I was very happy with the lineup. Uh, all right, I had no clue on this one either. So let's get right into it. Uh, this film is from uh, Mexico, and it is The Untamed uh, from uh, director uh, Amet Escalante. And in this film, the unhappy Alejandra and her brother Fabian and the mysterious Veronica fall under a creature's tentacled sexual spell. But while the monster can give intense pleasure, it can also inflict pain. <laughs> something mem uh, <clears throat> something God? members of this twisted triangle may be too late to avoid. Fans of the twisted horror head scratchers like Possession and Antichrist should cozy up to this dark art house sci-fi thriller from acclaimed Mexican director Amat, Amat Escalante. Uh, all right, so and how does he what? Say, what are those green peppers? What does he call them over there? I think I said that name right. Now I could be wrong. No, no, I was asking the name of the green peppers from Mexico. Yeah, say it, Dan. See if you have it right now. It's a callback, Dan. Jalapeno. Wow. Yeah. Bravo. I'm, you I'm screwed just... up the callback, Dan. I wanted the I wanted the bloom well, house. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not going to say jalapeno in my regular and, life and, when I order. And we're but, back. <laughs> uh, but anyways. Dan, your white showing. <laughs> but, so, uh, if you want to have that full debate, let's, let's listen to our taste test show. Uh, so, The Untamed, uh, this was recommended by... 
That was me. I've been trying to get Bugs. you fuckers to watch this for the longest time. That <laughs> and also um, sleep, sleepless sleep. I, fuck, sleep yeah. tight. It's also oh, on I've, right I've now. seen sleep tight. I, I, yeah, I, I don't think Dan, Todd has. No. Right? You, you need okay. to. Die. Yeah, and we I can do that, that. too. Um, yeah. But this one in particular, yeah, I was excited when this movie first came out. Was that 2017, something like that? Yeah. I it was playing locally, and I invited everybody. No one came, and I'm like, "Fuck! I don't, am I gonna go by myself to this like you know piece?" And like none of you live near me, and Todd, we weren't that close at the time. Like, yeah, but um, so I went by myself, and I, and I was blown the fuck away. I'm like, "There's something here for everybody, everybody," <laughs> yeah. and like I just got, I loved all the characters. Well, not all of them. Some of them are dickheads, but like I was, I was invested. I'm like, yeah. "What is going on? This is so weird. This is really cool." And then we they reveal something like full blown. I'm like, they're not holding anything back. This is fucking fantastic. They, they <laughs> mentioned possession, the 1981 Sam Neill flick. Yeah, uh, very much so. It is an homage to that uh, intentionally. But man, this goes further. Yeah, uh, and and that that's the reason why I loved it. And like, I'm no joke. I've preached this movie for a long time. Like, you need to see it. You need to see it. And I'm glad we all did. And I I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Most more more. Uh, the most one I'm more curious about is Kruger because tentacles and like this is a CG monster, so I was very forgiving. I think it looks cool, looks gross. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love this fucking movie, and I hadn't seen it in a while, and I'm really glad we were we're reviewing it now because yeah, I need to revisit this more often. I love it a lot. Well, um, yeah, I thought it was first off. Like beautifully shot film, like it had really good cinematography. Um, you already brought up the effects for the monster. Yeah, I had no problem. Well, I thought it looked really good, especially uh, you know when it when it was getting down and going all types of orifices. Um, <laughs> the the, the chemicals too. I guess they're lubed somewhat because I was like, damn. I I mean, I, I think it produces it, it's lubed naturally. I mean, I think that's what the purpose of the tentacles were. Space but, loop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, man. It, it, space. I mean, it worked. I mean, this alien was kind of a pimp considering how many people it uh, gotten. It wrapped it, all the erogenous zones. And it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, like you already said, man, the character is really interesting, especially how their like lives were intertwining with each other, and you know the whole relationship between the husband and the brother-in-law and how the wife. Up is that? Yeah, and then <laughs> and the wife, and then you know the way the alien comes into the play. Oh man, uh, really, really good writing, and just like it, it kept me completely glued to the screen the whole time to see how everything was going to play out. Um, and I mean, with the story right away, like the opening scene, we get you know a disgustingly uh, intriguing, you know, little tidbit of what we're gonna you know see later, and uh, <laughs> the amount that we see later, like holy shit, like you know, we see some straight up hentai motherfucking shit. Uh, so I mean, if you're into that type of thing, like this is hentai horror. I mean, that's the best way to fucking put it. Um, From and- Mexico. Yeah, and just and watching this creature literally destroy people's families and everything fucking crumble before them. I mean, really interesting fucking film. And, I, like, you know, it never... It, it's one of the weirdest movies I've seen in a while, uh, but in, like, the best way. And it's definitely something I need to add to my collection now. Um, and, like, see... Like, I need to watch Possession now. I, have, I haven't watched Possession in full. I've seen the scene the infamous scene with the tentacle monster. Uh, but now that I, now that I've seen this film, I want to rewatch this and watch possession at the same time and compare them because uh, yeah, big inspiration there. And uh, I'm all for it. Well, pugs, I yes, am sir. sorry. <laughs> that you, let me, go watched... myself? <laughs> that you <laughs> let me go by myself. No, that I didn't l- listen and l- watch it sooner. Good. So, Oh well, yeah, and the other thing too, but <laughs> I, I'm more yeah. You've been you've been trying to get us to watch this one for a while. Um, I'm glad we technically not a Shutter original, so but we we no, let it slip in. Yeah. This is we call this end. one of the bonus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I know how bad you wanted to, us. It to is see on it. Shutter though right now. Yes, so. it is. Yeah. yeah, it is on. It was on HBO uh, HBO before I went to Max, uh, uh, the Spanish version for like the longest time. 
And I was like, shit, it was here the entire time because I, I I found it as it was like, oh, you only have a certain amount of days before right. it leaves. I was like, fuck me. And <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, you guys already kind of hit hit the stuff on this one. Um, it has it has something for everyone. The mm. tentacle stuff's dope. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a lot in this one to unpack, <clears throat> but it, it it's definitely worth the watch. Yeah, and I it's one I definitely feel I'll be re- revisiting soon. Yeah, and I mean it does have that what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh stuff with the the tentacle sex and there's there's like i said there's pretty much every kind of sex in this movie <laughs> so it'll like spartacus uh, they get yeah. something for everybody <laughs> yeah hey that you're, Kruger, you're covered. Yeah, spartacus. Um, but uh very extremely well acted i mean this is just you know about a family destroyed uh, <laughs> That's lies all over the fucking place long before, you know, you, you have the, the monster come into it. Uh, be forewarned, very graphic sex scenes, uh, which is very rare on Shudder. I know Cannibal Holocaust had a special warning, but this one has a special warning. They do it once in a while, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it doesn't quite get pornographic level, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it gets porn. Like, I mean, Close. it's not yeah. it's not the length of a pornographic scene, like sex scene. But I mean, you get a couple, at least a couple of uh, about fifteen seconds of some hentai porn. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't quite get anybody getting off to that. But hey, to each their own. Uh, there goes Dan kink shaming again. Yeah, you leave me alone, Dan. <laughs> that's cool uh it's a very sad film in a lot of ways too it's kind of depressing you feel bad uh for for the kids and everything and uh i do not feel bad for the kids those are kids are paying the fucking ass the yeah, mom though oh uh, man like this bitch can't catch a break <laughs> i thought man I, I just gonna say i thought she was good it, it would have been way better if she fed the kids to it though <laughs> <laughs> there was a point where i'm like are they going to do that? Because that I would be fucking amazing. Dude, if they if they went that hard, that this definitely would have been a five out of five. Honestly, they could have just went up to like the door where it's at, and it just wraps around their leg, and then it yeah. ends. I would have been, I would have lost my fucking shit. Right. Man. Damn. Uh, Dan, continue. Just, <laughs> no, it. it I, I I love Kids. Mexican horror. Um, just not their words. Know, it it's I pronounced. Jalapeno, correctly. So but you just said you're going to call it the other one in real life. Because I think most people pronounce it that way. In that right. in the area you live, probably. Everywhere I've been, BC, Washington yeah. State. Well. Hmm. I swear, <laughs> even I I don't want you to text Caesar and get. I just want to ask him. And see we know the answer. We p- showed you the definition. Piz, Piz well, even I, said, said I want to see what Caesar says with no. He's gonna say like this. Oh, I don't know. There you go. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <You nailed it, laughs> But anyway, um, you know we used to constantly uh, do the Caesar voice to torture him. At some points I, I got nice and stopped doing it. So I did not better. know that. <laughs> yeah, it needs to. So. But this is a very well made film. This is not cheesy. This is not. No. Uh, it's different. Very different, very sexually fucked up. So it, it'll depend if you're in the mood for this one, but it is actually a pretty fantastic little film. When uh, I when I watched it, there was only like maybe five to six people in the house, and, <laughs> and no one walked, walked out. out. No, okay. no one walked out. One of them was a reviewer. I forgot his name. He has, he has dreadlocks and he just a little flamboyant, really nice guy. Um, I forgot where I was going with that, but like I was shocked, and everyone at, after after the theater, everyone was looking at each other, like, "Yeah, we all just saw that, right?" <laughs> <laughs> um, way less, way more tame film, but uh, after we watched um, Lords of Salem, uh, we watched uh, like I, I think I saw it like the the day it premiered. Everybody looked at after you know the big climactic ending and all the shits going on, seeing a bunch of weird naked bitches every and like. The ending hit. Everybody was like, "Did we just watch this shit?" I feel like we just took a tear to the acid. So that, well, I can only imagine because fucking this movie's way more fucked up and creepy. So well, uh, I, I'll throw in the Lords of Salem one too, and I think I've told it before. There was like three, four of us in it for a screening on the the opening day. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I just remember the, the black guy was like, that shit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll bring this up then because I went to the Rob Zombie Q&A. And you know how normally people start clapping when they announce the person who's going to do the Q&A? It was fucking dead silent. <laughs> I was like, I'm still a big Rob Zombie fan. I didn't care for the movie. But as he's walking, I'm like, oh, yeah. Man. I like that movie. Yeah, I, I I feel like I'm the I'm I'm one of the only people that like that movie nowadays. You're not, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that like it. I, that I, 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 I think it's his best looking movie. It's, that's like his cleanest and most pretty movie. But like story wise, and also, well, let's not get into it. I don't yeah. revisit it that much, but I uh, did like it. But without a doubt, Possession is definitely better. And so why 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 don't we or not possession fucking oh, the untamed excuse you you're right there too though <laughs> get, 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 getting my tentacle sex mixed up I'm sorry <laughs> um yeah so without further ado why don't we rate the untamed so I am a four out of five nice and yeah, I I, was- I think I think I could definitely have room to grow uh in future viewings because I do already want to watch it again go ahead Dan my bad. Uh, I'm four out of five as well. I think except Antenna, we were same tonight on everything, crew. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I don't know if it has huge like rewatch factor to it, but I it is a it, hey, it's an experience for sure. Date night, guys, just <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh How about you guys, Todd? Well, I'm a four. Also, I did really enjoy this, and this one also feels like room to grow. Yeah, so. Right. On. Well, I'm a five. But I also nice. saw it at a big fucking theater. I, I, I think that would help, too. But, um, yeah, I fucking love this movie. Hell yeah. Since he already came up, I feel like we need to invite Caesar for a watch along. <laughs> Dude, that would be... Okay, you know how bad... I, I'll tell you this real quick. You know how bad it was with the Caesar voice? Like, even my mom went to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, legitimately everyone. <laughs> it's been, like, 15 years. It's coming back. It's time to bring it back. Hellbound, it's making its return. <laughs> Yes, yes, I was going to say Hellbound, guys. Um, well, I'm sure we'll be talking more about that. Uh, all right, so bonus review time for Suicide Squad. I think we will probably have some spoilers on this discussion. If I'm, I don't know. We're, we're going to do regular review, hit spoilers, and then just go. So we'll, we'll, okay. we'll hold them back. All right. Well, so if you have not watched it on HBO Max or theatrical yet, and I know there are very few of us who went to see it theatrically, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can, uh, yeah, you, you'll still get the spoiler wall, so don't worry. All right. Uh, so, for those of you unfamiliar, uh, I'm sure most are aware of this, but from writer director James Gunn, The Suicide Squad. Uh, Supervillains Harley Quinn, Bloodsport, Peacemaker, and a collection of nutty cons at Bell Rev Prison join the super secret, super shady task force, tax, task force X as they are dropped off at the remote enemy infused island of Corto Maltese. Um, all right. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll go first. So, first off, Love the soundtrack for this film Um, from opening to close. There's just so many iconic tracks that enhanced uh, the tone for a lot of scenes and thought that was great. Same with the cinematography, masterfully done and made everything feel like it was coming straight off a comic book page. Um, Man, really amazing stuff there. The acting was fantastic all around. Um, I'll I'll start with smaller cameos like Michael Rooker in the beginning. Thought his part was great. I also liked uh, Joaquin Casillo as uh, Mateo Suarez. Uh, I saw him in a Spanish horror movie called Bezelbuth a while back. It's a Shudder film. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I I enjoyed that film quite a bit. So it was nice to see him there. And I liked his character. Um, As far as the bigger roles, John Cena was hilariously awesome as Peacemaker. I mean, he he had some of my favorite moments throughout the film. Uh, Margot Robbie playing Harley was great per usual. And uh, Sylvester Stallone gave his best performance to date because Rocky and Rambo ain't got shit on King Shark. Um, The characters were also fantastic. Each villain felt important in their own ways to the story and nobody really outshined the other. 
uh, which I think is kind of hard in some superhero films. Uh, but this one did it right. And I also loved all the raunchy dialogue and the various one-liners we got throughout the movie. Uh, there's definitely some moments that just made me laugh out loud, like John Cena talking about eating dicks for liberty. I mean, <laughs> good God. <laughs> there was, I mean, there was some great stuff. The story throughout, I thought, was masterfully done. I dug the backstory we got for each character, and it made me really feet. Uh, really feel for each one in different ways. So, like, whether it was Rat Catch or Two, Polka Dot Man or King Shark, every everyone had their own moments to shine in the movie, and that's what I really love. Um, and the whole adventure we go on with the Suicide Squad uh, was, you know, just ultra violent, intense action, and he even had some light hard moment, light hearted moments, like when the gang is all like jam uh, jamming out in the bar and shit, <laughs> and like. It, it was just so fucking fun. The whole movie is just unadulterated, bloody, gory fun. And the final act, bringing a fucking kaiju into play with Starro. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, that hit all the right bells and whistles for me. Um, and I thought that portion of the film was awesome and couldn't have been done more perfectly. Uh, so without a doubt, I, I say Starro is Kaiju of the Year over fucking Kong and Godzilla, too. Like, seriously, uh, Starro <laughs> Star was a huge highlight for me. Um, and last but not least, the kills in this movie. God damn, there is so fucking many kills and it is violent and gory as fuck. And every kill was just really well done. Didn't shy away from being over the top. Uh, you know, with the violence and the gore and at, there was even some practical effects in this flick. And that really surprised me. Like a majority of the on-screen deaths are CGI enhanced, but there's definitely a couple of moments that I was ridiculously happy with just because they went completely practical with it. And I was like, Holy shit, that is awesome. And you know, it, with the, just the kill department in this film alone, uh, it brought some of the, best kills i've seen all year uh to life so it got my stamp for that and overall suicides the suicide squad's now my new favorite superhero movie uh it beat out Watchmen for me as my fa favorite superhero movie of all time if you're gonna ask me what's the best superhero movie of all time i'm gonna say the fucking suicide squad because that's really how i feel right now i've watched oh, yeah. the movie three fucking goddamn times already and i'm probably going to watch it a handful of time more by the end of this year and i will also say not only is it my favorite superhero movie of all time but it's my second favorite film we've gotten this year it came very very close to beating wow. psycho gore man for me um honestly and it, it could still beat psycho gore man we'll have to find out by the end of this year but i i, I mean it was just fucking awesome and which, i i know i was just gonna say which is funny One's a hundred percent a trauma homage, and the other one's from a trauma alum. So yep. Well, and, well, and like, so I hear. Did you feel like there was a trauma vibe to it a little bit too? Oh, the, in every I James Gunn's film, you can yeah. yeah. Sure too. Like even yeah, Scooby like, Doo, it's it's. Well, it's just it's super impressive to see a movie with such a high budget still keep that tone, and like this just this movie didn't hold back at all. I mean, when it came to nudity, gore, fucking everything, it, it had some balls, and yeah, and I, I, I thought it was balls. great. <laughs> oh yeah, and we saw oh, that was we, fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, we saw some tits and we saw some balls, so uh, something for everybody. But uh, what about you, Pugs? Because I, I know you, I, I know you had to have loved it as much as I did. Oh yeah, simply put, this is fucking fantastic. Um, I liked the last Suicide Squad movie. I, I didn't think I, everyone shitting on it. I'm like, y'all. I didn't think it was terrible either. It's, it's not. But this one. You can tell they left James Gunn alone. Okay. Let, let just do your thing, and man, he nailed it. Knocked it out of the park. I love all these characters. I would, as a big DC fan, never in my lifetime would I have thought in live action I would see Starro. Because I had, I, I didn't think I would see fucking Parademons and Darkseid either. So I had the same reaction when it popped up in the trailer for Parademons. Like, that fucking Parademons? Cool. Is that fucking Starro? No fucking way. Yeah. So that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of fucking cool little deep cuts. I mean, Cor Cordo Maltese is no longer a deep cut, but it used to be. It's the island that they're on first popped up. 
in live action in Batman 89. This where Vicky Vale took her photos. So that was cool. Um, I just, some of these characters I never thought I'd get to see on big screen. King Shark is my favorite. Weasel second clo- a close oh, second. Oh, dude. No, hilarious. Um, but yeah, King Shark, fucking adorable. I just want to hug him. And like every time they tease killing him, I was like, you need to knock it off. He needs to survive. And you know, I'll dude, let you watch me find out if he does. But man, I was it was nail biting the whole time every time he was in danger. Dude, how um, awesome was it like how indestructible he is too? Like yeah. that that's what I loved. Like, yeah, like you know, I was worried about him dying too, but I was like, dude, this dude, motherfucker every just took out a building. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's bad as fuck. Um, but King, King King Shark is my favorite. But in a close second, fucking John Cena, and I I cannot say that about anything. His Peacemaker <laughs> is fucking hysterical, and I can't wait for that HBO show. It's gonna be out of out of this world. I fucking loved it. Love everything about it. I've seen it four or five times. I can't even keep counting now. And I'm gonna watch it a bunch more. So it's a great great film. I'm really curious about Dan because I know you're not really into these. But I'll, let's uh, find I'll... out. Oh, I'll go last because I think it's awesome. going to make more sense to go okay. last. Well, uh, Idris, Idris, Idris Elba is the shit. So. Go ahead, Dan. You may want to go before me. Why? I have a feeling I'll be the... That's what I'm out. saying to I'm go big. now. Oh, okay. You want me to go? All right. Um, all right. So first, I do have good things to say. Um, James Gunn has writes really good dialogue. Um, now, I'm not... A superhero guy so i want everybody to generally speaking so i want everybody to factor that in uh you know you may not put as much stock in my opinion on this one because it's not my favorite thing in the world uh i will say i really very much enjoyed guardians of the galaxy i thought that film uh particularly the first one the second one you know not bad but not as good as the first uh i thought that had a lot of heart very entertaining all memorable characters uh the pro i have also watched all the other suicide squad movies not that you almost oh, really one of them have to. Uh, unless, you, unless you watch well, the animated movies there's only one well i'm counting uh birds of prey the harley quinn since she's That's not a suicide squad movie no it's not but i mean yeah so harley yeah, quinn movie. we'll one. just go with that um but all right so yes he writes some good dialogue there are some laughs to be had here the entire thing to me is just this is a comedy uh, for me, uh, and that's okay because some of it's quite funny. Uh, there's really no story for me though. I, I really these characters need to be a little more dark. I thought it was just a little bit too jokey for me. I wanted a little more edge. But you uh, like Guardians of the Galaxy, which is all a comedy too. Yeah, but that one, for me, that was heartwarming at times. Okay, it, yeah. it, it wasn't... You didn't have them fighting... This doesn't surprise me at all. This is exactly <laughs> what I thought you were going to say. You didn't have them fighting a giant starfish. At that point, for me, I was like... And they uh, stole that from, from Ralph Breaks the Internet. Yeah. Oh, oh they did not. Ralph Breaks the Internet. I didn't hate it. I was kind of ready for it to be done. I will throw one great compliment to this movie, though. It it was just it just aspired to be an entertaining superhero movie. There was no, you know, like oh, we gotta hit all of the woke shit to, to check the boxes. And he he, 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 he could have had to after his other shit too. That is true, <laughs> and he did. He just hey, it didn't work as much for me. He just cut all the pedo jokes. <laughs> I, I didn't. Uh, I haven't looked at any other opinions on this movie yet. I don't know. I know the box office was pretty dismal, but uh, yeah, it did. The, the whole tone didn't really work for me. Yeah, there's the occasional laugh, the fu- you know funny line, but the the thing as a whole just didn't work. Uh, I, I I wanted to like it more. I really did because I do like James Gunn. I think he's very talented. It was just a little too manic for me, and I uh, sorry guys, I'm the turd in the that's punch bowl tonight. That's what I expected from you, dude. <laughs> I yeah, was gonna be shocked comic, if it was the other way. Comic book movies and like shit like that. I do not really your cup of tea, and then even even then, it's, yeah, I, I just knew it wasn't gonna be for you. 
it's got to be darker, I think, for me. Uh, but there's exceptions. Like, I mean, I have my childhood nostalgia right. stuff that I like, but I will yeah. just say this. Like, uh, real quick, do you like uh, Batman v Superman, the Ultimate Edition? Have you seen that one, the three-hour one? Uh, yes, and I I don't remember really. Like, I, it wasn't horrible. I was just indifferent to it. Okay. Yeah, and and this is not horrible either. I just it was a little too much towards the end. I was like, uh it just didn't work. I wanted a little more heart. Some would argue it's in there, but it just felt like it's, it's there. Dude, that one yeah. I don't it's it's there, especially with one character in particular. Ratcatcher 2, I'll just say that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But like I said, my opinion may not mean as much because it's not my thing. So uh... He's just mad because oh, I can't say it because we're not spoilers yet. <laughs> Never mind. We can, yeah, be, I'm trying to avoid those. Yeah. But... All right. Um, well, no, I haven't. I haven't gone yet. So yeah, no, no. no I, that was going to throw it to you. I thought you were going to. Okay, there you go. Dan threw us all off. Um, well, I figured we'd come back because I'm. I'm a lot more positive. Not my favorite James Gunn superhero movie. Okay. Dan, what is it? Super. Super. There we go. Yeah, I, um, would, I would agree. <laughs> um. But I did really like this one, and those are totally two different kind of movies. For a comic book movie, this one was very good. Um, I know we already, you know, mentioned John Cena's Peacemaker was awesome. Um, uh, see, I, yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, uh, okay, Who? Michael Rooker? Savant? Yeah. So, okay, I'll just do this since I, I don't know what to say without giving shit away. Lloyd Kaufman, I like marked that audibly when he popped in the theater. I was like, ooh! <laughs> the guy next to me was like, what the fuck is this guy? <laughs> He's allowed to do whatever he wants. Just make Lloyd the main character. He could have had the Peter Capaldi role. Just fucking give it to him. I agree. He should have been the thinker. That would have been cool as fuck. <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. I just, the studios won't trust him that much. <laughs> But yeah, I, I did like it, and it's hard for me not to like anything James Gunn's done. Even his even the parties he used to have are pretty hilarious from all the pictures. So, <laughs> <laughs> so other than that, yeah, I did really like it. I kind of want to get past that start spoiler wall to talk. Yeah, sure, we can do that for sure. Well, let's rate it then. Yep, Mister Kruger. Yep, what's five, you? Yeah, like I already said, five out of five. Uh, second favorite movie I've seen all year. And uh, we'll see by the end. It may be my favorite film. Uh, gotta say, also, one of the most violent films I've seen. I don't know how that fucking first, long. That first shot, I was like, Kruger's gonna like this. He's gonna Dude. approve. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, let's get to that spoiler yeah. wall. Yeah, we, we, didn't, we didn't get that the last time, but uh, yeah, um, I'm all for it. Of course, uh, it's a fight for me. <laughs> The only, you know what? The only thing that can make it better if there was a Batman cameo, but there's not. And also, fun fact, the person who came up with the way to defeat Starro originally is Batman, but we'll get past that later. <laughs> you gotta give him his props. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I've gone back and forth between a four and a half and five on this one because I really liked it, and I've already watched it twice. So just because of that, I'm going to say it's a five, too. Dan, uh, well, can I guess? You Sure. Two and a half. I was gonna guess two. That's a two. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's what I have written down. It's not. It's not for me. I needed just more of a story, and they just crossed too far into the camp. You're a miserable <laughs> bastard. It's okay. I, it's <laughs> we don't I, review I, comic book movies with Dan for a reason. But I, see, I, I, there's a lot of contradictions though. Too, there are contradictions out there on that. I just this just felt like yeah. But no, the me. contradictions just, that they are are not the ones you. They're like pretty obvious that you would like the, those over the more mainstream stuff. Yeah, I mean, no, I, that's for the most part. For the record, part. my favorite superhero is Toxic Avenger. Those who don't know, yeah. I just have a bit. Well, I do want to say I love Idris Elba and I love he was much the all shit. The cast. Yeah. Uh, he's awesome, but he does occasionally not make, make the best career of Dark Tower. And oh, uh, oh, he's gonna, gonna be the voice of Knuckles. Yeah, and, and Sonic 2. Yeah. Knuckles. Okay. But, uh, well, 
they are serial killers. Well, not all serial killers, but you know, like Harley's a serial killer, and I just thought like you needed a little more edge for me. They're not all you, supposed to be serial killers. Not though. serial, but they're all they're all they've criminals. Done pretty That's horrible. What, Har- Harley Quinn wouldn't be the dark one. Like she's just fucking loco. She's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Know. I, I mean, I don't understand where where you're saying. Like, where were you expecting it to go? I mean, we got the over the top violence of them literally brutally massacring people throughout the thing from start to finish. I I, I mean, the, I'm the not a superhero. Guy. The villain <laughs> thing the though, fucking, was that was hilarious. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's All right, fucking let's get up the spoiler wall. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all right. Going. Spoiler warning. We're getting close. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you don't want to be spoiled, I'm going to throw the warning up. Get out Dope of here. Don't as fuck. Um, we're going <laughs> yeah, to talk about. Oh, well, so before we go, Dan, why don't you start pipping out stuff we got? What do we got next week? We have night an interview with Nightmare Christy, uh, the owner of Nightmare Toys. Uh, we're very excited to uh, talk to her. That's going to be a great interview. Uh, Dan's going to be on his best behavior with his smoking jacket. As I always am. (laughs) Uh, We also, uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out our taste test slash unboxing. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Also, patreon.com slash flesh wound features for exclusive original uncensored content. It all starts at just a buck. So uh, we got some cool stuff on there for you guys. Thanks to all of our patrons. Fleshwoundfeatures.com has all the links. We're on Discord, Twitch. All that good stuff. Horror Cartel, Flesh Wound Radio, Facebook group. And we are Flesh Wound Radio on Twitter. And you can also follow us uh, separately as well. All right. On that note, here's your spoiler warning. There we go. Uh, So, yeah. Yeah. the village massacre, I think we left right? <laughs> yeah, fucking hilarious. Yeah, that was fucking <laughs> awesome. That was awesome. Dude, like, the way is just murdering everybody, and at the end, our bad. <laughs> yeah, and the way they're trying to one up each other, like that was fucking awesome. And like the ending shot when he's like, "That's non-lethal. It's an explosive round. That motherfucker <laughs> explodes." Like that was awesome. And then no one likes to show off. Well, yeah, and then, and then and that just shows how much of a vi- like how how they're still villains because they ended up killing their own allies. Like, I mean, that was that, that was I thought that was fucking awesome. What was your problem with it? Well, in general, like Guardians of the Galaxy, we had like the We Are Group moment. This one, the, the tone. And it, it's, it obviously, I think, is going to work for a lot of people. And I acknowledge, like, there were uh, her line, it, it's like the rain, it's like angels all splooging. <laughs> yeah, there are funny lines that made me laugh. I didn't give this a zero by any I, means. I, I but... think when it's a comic book movie, Dan, I think you like them either super lighthearted, like, like we got with Guardians, or like super fucking dark. You don't really care if it's like right in the middle, which is kind of like this one walks the line. It goes back and forth. This Am was I... violent, but I'd still say this was like the polka dot character. I was like, okay, this is was totally fucking good. awesome. Okay, I'm just gonna say uh, Kruger, but you're uh, gonna you're gonna drive yourself crazy trying to figure out how his brain's working. Yeah. <laughs> so just don't yeah. I can't gonna, imagine he's not I'm gonna make it make sense. alone with this. <laughs> no, I guarantee you're not. There's a bunch of other assholes out in this world too. But but dude, Taika Watiti <laughs> as the rat catcher with a fucking heroin at addiction and his love awesome. for his daughter. No. Yeah. That's a big, big heart there. She I showed him in trauma. it more. I was a little surprised. I was like, oh, shit. I was shocked he was in there to begin with. Not but it's awesome. I like, oh, he's cool. Mantis chick is in there. A bunch of fucking Marvel people showed up in the yeah. background. Now, yeah. King Shark. Wonderful. Uh, but that's not how he is in the comics. But, like, there's several versions of him. I, this one, they made him a little more Danny. But he was cool. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I mean, I he, an his kills are cool. But I don't know. I, he's no. Dude, he's munching on a fucking head at the end of the thing. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Yeah, me yeah. too. Like he was my favorite character in the movie, just with like 
how like goofy he is, but also like when he's killing people, he's literally, you know, I mean, dude, he fucking literally tore somebody completely fucking in half. I mean, he, the the shot at the end where he eats that one dude after they were just loading like clip after clip after clip into him. And then you see <laughs> he rips that motherfucker's head off and he's got it in his mouth. And the guy's like looking at him and shit. I mean, there was a, there was some fucking awesome moments with him. And yeah. like, num num. And dude, he just talks to... in the comic normal, right? Yeah. Or... yeah. Okay, so yeah, I thought okay. But there's also comics where he grunts too. So, but for the most part, he's an intelligent fucking godlike That's fucking what I shark. Thought for some reason I was. So like, he's not dumb in the comics. No, not in all of them. Oh, and the God. comics are my, a little. My, I, although King Shark's my favorite in this, in this movie, my favorite version of him just came out like la- two years ago in the Harley Quinn cartoon. Yeah, steals a show. Yeah. Steals a fucking show. No, I know there watch that. Been different versions of the comic. I know there's like what is it? The new Fifty Two is like the new stuff. And that's or, that's uh, not a thing anymore. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, that's been a while, the, sir. <laughs> is the the more recent one this tone? Because uh, what do you mean? Like like what? just King Shark or like more violent? Well, I know it's violent, but like, it, is it this the, movie's way more violent? Comedy than heavy. Than some, no, of, it's not. I wouldn't say heavy. It's there, okay. but it's not. No, this one's definitely more funny. Okay. But I'm yeah. not really like up to date with Dude. current comics. So. Okay. Dude, so we need to talk about the John Landis tribute because. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was tired. That's, I was like, ooh, gotta talk about that. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I I screamed that out loud, and my girl, my girl was like, "Babe, that's <laughs> fucked up," <laughs> and like. <laughs> Because that's immediately where my head but went. Accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was great. Like, uh, also just the first kill, like when Blackguard gets his, the whole front of his ha- face blown off. Like that, I was like, "Oh shit, we're gonna party for this fucking movie." Because like they don't give a fuck. Uh, just you know, with what what the gore they were showing, and just that that whole opening scene I, I i mean i love that expect and you know to top it off the, when michael rooker's character is like fuck this and just <laughs> retreats you get a cronenberg-esque fucking head explosion i mean <laughs> and then with the warner brothers fucking that written was in his blood, i mean <laughs> yeah that just uh i mean like straight out of a comic book i mean it, it really uh, it set the it, tone for the movie even before that, when Weasel was just flew out of the fucking plane, <laughs> just fucking dying. Did anybody Dude, check? Weasel can swim? The Weasel is dead. The <laughs> only part that I'm like, I, I, I really don't accept, as um after that one girl knocked Amanda Waller out. As soon as the wall wakes up, she's fucking everyone up in that room. She is the only fucking person that has ever really put Batman in his place. That's not like a hero or have any type of fucking powers stood her fucking ground and told him what time it was did not back down props to her for that also, also I, oh god oh no no go ahead um also i like the whole fucking thing with polka dot man shooting his <laughs> polka dots and the way they would like melt through people like that kill he got with the uh with the two people in the office building Oh, like, and the, the way they melted all, all over each other, that was awesome. And just the way he kept seeing his fucking mom, <laughs> like, yeah. that was hilarious, especially when fucking, he's like, uh, I think it, uh, Bloodsport's like, it's your mom, and points at Starro, and his mom is destroying the fucking building, and he attacks her fucking ankle and shit. Like, that was, oh, man, that was awesome. And, like, the thing the mom's that was- on the dance floor, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> yeah. Funny as fuck. When like how good of a time like I was just having such a great time with this fucking movie and like I thought it was funny that even Polka Dot Man as stupid of a fucking character as that 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 could be they made him badass and pretty cool like you know when he's mutating with the polka dots growing up and he fucking <laughs> expels them and never would I ever have thought Polka Dot Man would make it in a live action movie. <laughs> Let alone before Brainiac, this is ridiculous. Also, I think the chick with that was all in the prison that was all like had a bunch of colors and stuff. I yeah. think that was Crazy Quilt, but I don't know. That's also fucking insane to me. Like, what's next? Condiment Man, Condiment King. <laughs> um, that's real. Condiment. Yeah. <laughs> 
also, it, it, yeah, he shoots ketchup and mustard. <laughs> He's a terrible villain. <laughs> also, like the scene when we get to see the all the Vinkers experiments and stuff, like that was so fucking badass. With the one guy <laughs> strapped to the table where they took the starfish off and it ripped open the whole side, the whole front of his jaw and his face. Like that was a straight up practical effect. I mean, there was no CGI for that, other than like the Starro little face hugger thing but like that was all practical and that like really popped me big like that was one of my favorite scenes in the movie and then shortly after when starro kills the thinker rips him in half and then he go- just takes his body with his tentacle and splats him against a mirror that was my favorite kill in the movie i just thought that was just fucking uh so badass to see his power and shit and then like you know the whole the whole thing with Starro, you know, gets his whole army and all those people are fucking, you know, getting attacked by facehuggers and he has like hundreds of fucking people. Uh, I just thought that whole scene was really, really well done, especially like every time he got hit, like they were all screaming and looked super creepy. Like, I, I, man, I love Starro. Like, I was really surprised how awesome like the sequences that James Gunn did with the you know, it being a kaiju too. Like it, it reminded me of stuff you would see in a kaiju film. Star um, was also super sympathetic just because like yeah, Star was minding its own fucking business. Bro. Yes. And the, that last the, line, the line. Yeah. The line when he's like, I was, I was happy looking at the stars and, and like, you're like, God damn, Star didn't want any of that shit. And also, like, they insinuated that Venker was, like, raping his... Uh... He had their way with me. <laughs> yeah, like... So, I mean, Star was going through some shit, but yeah, I loved... Oh, man, Star And the way they take they take him out, too, was just so badass, with Harley mm-hmm. jumping through his eyeball with the harpoon, and then uh, Rat Catcher 2 gets all the rats. <laughs> oh, yeah, the javelin. And, Can uh, I ask you guys... Um, because maybe this was just me, but it seemed like this was very under for a, a big superhero movie under promoted. I didn't feel like this had the same advertise advertisement that I other films have had. I think that's just because it's post pandemic. Because I think it's the same, okay. and also it's not really on your radar. Yeah, even, even with James Gunn. Well, yeah, but I saw a shit ton of stuff for like Black Widow and Disney. I don't know, this one just seemed like it didn't. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, no, and yeah. Disney, of course, comes up in your searching. So. I will say, I absolutely was rooting for it, especially because he just was going for a fun movie, and I think for a lot of people, it, it is obviously that. Well, um, a lot of people are still butt hurt from the first Suicide Squad. They're like, oh, I'm not going to watch it, and then a lot of people don't like James Gunn, so yeah. they like it had a bunch of shit going against it. And I, I do think though, this will find an audience just like every fucking DC movie does. Oh, sure, five yeah. years down the line when everyone finally catches up and smartens up. So that's uh, going to be the same case with all DC. Cause all you yeah. I really <laughs> wanted it to do really well. And because I, I tend, there's more with DC that would appeal to me than Marvel. I think for the most part, it's a little darker stuff. Uh, they haven't been. Did you ever watch the Punisher uh, Netflix show? Uh, I watched like a couple episodes of daredevil, which was actually pretty good. Yeah. Just never finished. Just never finished it. I think I think Punisher might be more up your alley. Uh, Daredevil season Probably. two, and then the first, I've heard. and then I've heard Punisher that, all together. Yeah. But, but yeah, Kruger, have you seen those? The Punisher stuff, no. Yeah. Um, Daredevil season who, two. Watch that. It's I have a amazing. friend who tells me Daredevil the series was like the, some of the best comic book stuff he's seen in a decade. Yeah, yeah. it's great. No. Like legitimately fucking fantastic. Although I do think the first two seasons of Arrow kicked the shit out of it, but. It, then it goes to shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I like. I, I, I mean, I liked Snyder Cut a lot, so um, I liked it quite a bit. I like them all, but Man of Steel still don't You're like that one. Fucking nuts, but that's cool. Yeah. I'm not yeah, a I, big Man of Steel guy, but it's a pretty decent. I'm not a Superman movie. dude like at all. At least like I, I don't it's, think I am. But every time he comes on, I'm like I like Superman. <laughs> I just <laughs> know that, Superman three. Sorry. Why are they so right. against casting Henry Cavill? It seems like everybody wants him, and they've just got some. What's the issue with Henry Cavill? <laughs> I have no fucking idea. He's the perfect Superman. Yeah, I, he, I have no idea. Why? Well, all the fucking head changes got rid of at the... Warner Brothers that fucked them a lot, and like everyone, everyone just bumps heads, and they all want to do a different thing. It's it's. They should just let Zack Snyder do his thing. 
Yeah, yeah focus on the good like... movie first. Don't insert whatever shit you want to say to the world. Um, before we move on, just one last thing I want to say about the Suicide Squad. The scene where Peacemaker kills Colonel Flag. And he fucking takes, you know, that shard of, I, I think it was like a toilet seat or something, stabs him in the heart, and then it it, it, zo- it does the x-ray shot of seeing the heart. Just and to make sure he's in <laughs> Oh, dude, that was so fucking awesome. And uh, I, 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 that, that scene was just dope as fuck. And I just, I loved how evil Peacemaker became at the end and just any means necessary if he's going to protect the country. Uh, and it was never really a full, like, he, like heel turn because he, he said from the beginning, yeah. I will do whatever it takes to keep peace. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited yeah. for that show, dude. Yeah, me yeah. too, man. I I'm I'm in. I can't wait. I hope it gets a second film, uh second Suicide Squad, because I need to see King Shark and Weasel interact with each other. That that that's I, that's must well, fuck, have. Now let's get Gorilla Grodd up in this bitch too. Like, we're gonna get <laughs> I, all of them. I think you will get more Suicide Squad. I think it's gonna be a TV show though, not a movie. Well, That's where I the, think we'll get it's it. gonna be a while before we get any of these. Yeah, because this unfortunately. Well, Margot Robbie's is going on a break, a Harley Quinn break for a little bit. She wants to do other shit. Dude, she was so fucking hot. Yep. Uh, that oh, we all right. agree. Dude, dude, and, and there was a Harley Quinn sex scene. I mean, she could have showed a little <laughs> more skin. <laughs> but that, that wonderful wow, you channeling Dan there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I, everybody was <laughs> kind of hoping when that would start. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, but but you know, at least he had the balls to go there. I thought that was fucking cool. Yeah, I, yeah. Still, I didn't I expect mean, to see her. her uh, well, if you want to, it's in uh, what's uh, Wolf on Wall Street. Oh yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which I still haven't watched. I keep saying I'm going to watch it, then I look at the runtime. I'm like, maybe tomorrow. It's <laughs> it. I like it. I'm sure it will be. And uh, a lot of that is over the top as it is, like actually happened. Yeah. As, as wild that as crazy? that shit is. That's what, yeah, there's been a lot of areas like, look, that may seem ridiculous. That fucking happened. <laughs> well, it was cocaine. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what are the so, spoilers we have, gentlemen? Yeah. Um, what a, do you guys have anything for The Untamed? I, I don't really. No, I don't, know. I don't so. really have anything for anything. So, yeah. So okay. I, uh, yeah, I think we addressed everything. But I'm glad to talk about it. <laughs> no, I get I, you fuckers in this forever. <laughs> I just, I just gotta say the whole fucking thing with the husband fucking the brother-in-law, like that, that, that shit was fucked up. I was just like, holy shit, like, well, especially and the amount of shit he talks about being. Yeah, gay. that's what yeah. I was saying. Like. Yeah, that it, it, they did a good job of making him despicable. You but, know, yeah. I don't like hanging around with those people. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, he was. They let him off a little easy, considering. I thought he might get a little more. Dude, a... but like <laughs> when he got shit on by his mom's, like, yeah, you don't have a home here anymore. You just embarrassed our whole fucking family and our fa- on our business. I'm like, yeah, kind of right, but dude. And then this fucking asshole bitch like slaps the shit out of the girl. He claims to love. He just wants her back. Like that's dude, that's not gonna get her, her back. Her. Stupid motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, good. I was I was glad to watch him get you know sacrificed to the ten- tentacle monster to fuck him to death. <laughs> you know, I I still felt a little bad for Fabian, the brother, because like all he wanted to do was love somebody, and he knew he what he was doing was wrong. I wish he had a chance to like you know tell her I was sorry, but or tell him yeah say sorry, but I, once you cross that line, I don't think there's any going back. Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, uh, you acted like you were going to say something, Dan. No, no, no. I actually know of uh, <clears throat> uh, a cousin that married uh, the the brother's ex wife, which I, I like think that. is oh. fucked up. It's not somebody I don't know them, but like I, my mom told me about that, and I'm like, man, what Jesus. a piece of shit! I would never fuck. I mean. <laughs> They're lucky if I don't kill the brother, but yeah. you know, so I um, can imagine. Now, this was worse than that. There's no tentacle monster that I'm aware of involved. In that. <laughs> and we heard the 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 lube going on. I thought that was funny when I first saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first. Um, do you guys got anything for Candisha? No, uh, I I just got to say watching that. Poor African girl's dad get ripped in half it was pretty badass. Uh, 
that, the only that one that didn't me, deserve it. <laughs> yeah, but but that made me pop, like watching and, and like the way the Hulk and Candisha looked, and that the one scene too prior to that when she was stepping on that one dude with her hoofs, that was pretty badass too because you kept seeing like the bones breaking underneath the skin. It was a it was a solid practical effect. Yeah. But that was really the the best thing about it. Um, other than that, I, I I don't really have anything else. You guys got get, got anything? Nope. No, I'm uh, good. Weigh in, guys. We're curious to get your thoughts on these films. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, no, no, right. no more spoilers. No more nope. spoilers. All right. So, well then. On, on that note, good night, guys. Well, I was going to pimp out oh. again. And pimp out again. Nightmare Christie. Tune into that show. It's going to be a big interview. All right. Thank you in advance for coming on, uh, Miss Christie. And I'm looking forward to talking to you. Yes. So with that being said, gentlemen, let's get the fuck out of here and go watch Suicide Squad a couple more times. What say you? Fuck Dan? yeah. Good night, guys. Todd. I'll, I'll sign. Stay sick, motherfuckers. And I'll see you fuckers in Disneyland. <laughs>